Hello students, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe my TikTok page. Thank you so much. Okay, our quarter four, week one objectives. So at the end of the lesson, you should be able to, one, explain the history, uses, and application of statistics. Two, define statistics, sample, and population. Three, pose questions and problems that may be answered using statistics. And last one, four, create simple statistical instrument using questionnaire. Ito yung kailangan nyo matutuan or ma-master this way. So with that, let's review now during your elementary. So this is how you are already discussed. Now, can you remember these graphs you have learned in your grade 6? So we have different graphs, di ba? So we call this bar graph. And this one, ito naman ang favorite TV type movie natin. This type of graph is eye graph or circle graph. And this is called pictograph. And the last one, this is a line graph. So, bakit kaya meron tayong mga graph? Now, in statistics, it is important to know because this is the summary of your data. Okay? To make it interpret para mas madali natin maintindihan to present for your audience. Okay. So, with that, we are going to discuss now paano ba tayo gumagawa ng mga uh, graph natin. But before we come up with our different types of graph, okay, nagkakandak muna tayo ng mga survey or we just simply gather data. For example, ito no, survey on students' capacity for online classes. So, andyan yung name, section, address, okay, yung mga question natin, what gadgets do you use in joining online classes? We have the different types, the smartphone, tablet, laptop, desktop, computer, or none. Number five, we also have how do you connect to the internet? There are many possible possibilities, diba? So we thought after we gather the data from the specific person, so we can now uh, process the statistics. The data collected from this questionnaire will now be organized and presented in graphs. Then the results will be analyzed so that a valid conclusion will be obtained. Finally, it will now serve as a basis for a particular school to decide whether or not they will conduct online classes for their students. Kaya napakalagang malaman natin muna ang data natin to uh, come up with the different types of graphs. Okay, with that, we are going to discuss the history of statistics. But before that, the word statistics have been derived from Latin word status or the Italian word statista, meaning of this word is political state or government. Okay, so saan nga ba nagsimula ang statistics, no? During the... During the Babylonian era started the statistics no historical record showed this show that since the beginning of civilization simple forms of statistics had already been used so record showed that during the babylonian era they used small clay tablets to record tabulations of agricultural agricultural harvest and of commodities bartered or sold yun yung ginagamit na lang, no? yung clay Okay, the Egyptians naman, okay, so paano naman nag-evolve ang statistics? Okay, during the Egyptian analyzed the population and material wealth of their country before they, <coughs> before they began building the pyramids in the 31st century BC, even the biblical books of numbers. And one chronicle showed the statistical works Numbers contain two separate censuses of the Israelite, Israelites, while one chronicles describe the material wealth of various Jewish tribes. In China, similar numerical records existed before 2000 BC, as early as 594 BC. The ancient Greece held censuses used as basis for taxation. So, ganun sila ka, ano no, kapamaraan para mapaunlad yung kanilang agriculture. Okay, so, and that, we also have the 
Roman Empire. Dito naman, nag-evolve naman ang, uh, ang kanilang statistics. Rock records also show that the Roman Empire was the first government to gather extensive data about population, area, and wealth of the territories that it controlled. In Europe, a few comprehensive censuses were made during the Middle Ages. In the early 16th century, registration of deaths and births began in England. In the 19th century, investigators recognized the need to reduce the information to numerical values to avoid the ambiguity of verbal description. But today, at present, statistics is a reliable means of describing accurately the values of economic, political, social, psychological, biological, and physical data. Statistics serve as a tool to correlate and analyze collected, collected data. It is no longer confer, confined to gathering and tabulating data. Now it is also process of interpreting the information that serve as a basis for preparing the plans that we are going to do. Okay, so ganun ka-importante ang statistics natin. So with that, so meron tayong tinatawag na father of statistics. Sino kaya ito, no? So siya ay si Ronald Fisher. The greatest scientist of his time, Sir Ronald Fisher, 1892-1962, was a British statistician and biologist biologist who was known for his contributions to experimental design and population genetics. He is known as the father of modern statistics and experimental design. Although marami tayong mga kilalang statistician, no? but uh, he is uh, recognized as the father of modern statistics today. Okay, so with that, let's define, pag sinabi natin statistics, this is simply a branch of mathematics which deals with the study of collection, organization, analysis, and interpretation of data. So, isa-isahin natin yan, no? Yung mga salitang nakapaloob dyan sa definition para maintindihan natin. First, we are going to discuss collection. Paano ba, ang, or ano nga ba ibig sabihin ng collection? When we say collection, collecting refers to the gathering or information or data. Diba? Nakakakolekta tayo through some observation. Diba? Pag nag-observe ka, you can uh, gather data. Diba? Also, through uh, survey questionnaire, yung census natin, you can gather data or simply interview or one-on-one -on -one interview. Okay? There are several, ano, there are many types of way to gather data. And we also have that, after that, meron tayong organization. What uh, is organization? Organizing or presentation involves summarizing data or information in textual, graphical, or tabular forms. So dito naman, nagka-classify tayo. Green group natin yung mga may similarity and differences para mas madali natin maintindihan yung ating mga data. And we also have that after we organize, we can now proceed to analysis. Pag sinabi naman natin analysis, this is simply the process of breaking a complex toxic, I mean topic or concept into smaller parts in order to gain a better understanding. So ina-analyze natin. Paano ba tayo mag-analyze? Bring down natin yung concept. Hinimay-himay natin para maintindihan natin yung components niya, no? Okay, para maintindihan natin bakit ganito yung uh, concept natin. We have to break it down. You have to test the parts. Okay. And after we analyze, after we examine, we can now proceed to interpretation or interpret. Pag sinabi naman natin interpretation, a process of a reviewing data. Okay, it involves taking the result of data analysis making inferences on the relations studied and using them to conclude. So dito naman, no, ini-interpret mo na, ino-audit mo, kumbaga, no, tine-check mo kung tama ba yung mga na, uh, tentative findings natin based on the analysis, di ba? Tine-check natin dyan. And to be able to come up with what is the conclusion for that interpretation. Kaya nga mahalaga yung step-by-step uh, -step natin, no, collection, organization, analysis and interpretation. Kaya nga tinatawag din siya body of uh, 
or simply this is a science of collecting, no? Kasi na, we have to uh, apply the step-by-step procedure. Ibig sabihin yan, hindi ka pwedeng mag-interpret kung wala ka muna na-collect na data. Or kung wala ka na-analyze, paano ka mag-interpret, di ba? So meaning to say, you have to uh, go with the step-by-step uh, -step procedure. Okay, so with that, we have the different application and uses of statistics. Okay, we all uh, have the first business or economics. Dito, a business firm collects and gather data or information from its everyday operation. Okay, so statistics is used to summarize and describe those data such as the amount of sales, expenditures, and production to understand and determine the status of the company. So, dito natin makikita no, kung kumikita pa ba yung ating company or naluluki na ba siya. Okay, so, and with that, sa education naman, in education, in statistics, give information about school's population change. Ano yung nag-change na yan? Whether the statistics of enrollment, yung number ng uh, enrollment natin every year, or, yun, or also the dropout. Meaning to say, through statistical tools, a teacher can determine also the effectiveness of a particular teaching method by analyzing test scores obtained by students. Kaya malahag, mahalaga yung mga pag analyze natin no? kung ang effective ba yung ating pagtuturo sa mga bata sa students. And also the achievement. Okay, talaga tinatala natin yan. And also we have the psychology. So, psychologists are able to interpret meaningful aptitude tests, IQ tests, and another psychological test using statistical procedures or tools. So, dito nakatuon tayo doon sa behavior ng students. Statistics is used to determine the reliability and validity of a test, factor analysis, etc. of human behavior. Okay, so kailangan maalam natin bakit nga ba ganito yung pag-uugali ng bata, no? So meron tayong mga statistical tools para ma-determine. Yun yung mga factors natin. And we also have the politics or government. So dito naman, public opinion and election polls are commonly used to assess the opinions or preferences of the public for issues or candidates of interest. So, kaya nga mahalaga yung boto ng uh, karamihan. So, we are in a democratic country in the Philippines. So, kaya nga meron tayong mga eleksyon. So, doon natin makikita yung opinion ng mga uh, tao sa pagboto na yan. Sa pamagitan ng pagboto. And we also have the medicines. Dito naman sa medicine, in, uh, in, in statistics, is used to determine the effectiveness of new drug products in treating a particular type of disease. Example na yung mga experimental method, talagang yung mga, uh, mga ano natin sa medicine, talagang ginagawa nila yung talagang uh, pag-experiment para naman ma-solve ma ma yung ating problem dito sa COVID na uh, kinakaharap natin. So with that, they are trying to do their best. And with that, we also have the agriculture. Dito naman... Through statistical tools, an agriculturist can determine the effectiveness of a new fertilizer in the growth of plants or crops. So, concerns the crops production, plant protection, type of soils, and conditions. So, dito tinatala natin yung kanilang mga fertilizer na uh, ginagamit sa araw-araw na kanilang pagtatanim or ginagamit sa kanilang uh, bukid. And also yung mga kanilang types of soil, yung condition din, no? Kasi nga, kung tag-ulan yan, hindi ka pwede magtanim ng ganitong kung ano man yung nababagay doon. And also the, the protection, kailangan ma-protection natin. And yung crop protection natin na sinasabi, no? And we also have the entertainment. Sa entertainment naman, the most favorable actresses and actors can be determined by using surveys. So dito papasok yung statistics na rating of the members of the board of judges in beauty contests are statistically analyzed. Interviews are used to determine the most widely viewed television show. Okay, kaya mahalaga yung voting natin dyan. So kaya gaya ngayon kakatapos lang no, na Miss Universe 2020. So makikita natin doon kung sino yung mga nag-ranking or nasa top 10, top 5, so on and so forth. 
Okay. So with that, in statistics, there are two classifications. No? We have the descriptive and inferential statistics. Ano yung pagkakaiba ng dalawa? So pag sinabi natin descriptive statistics from the word describe, di ba? Meaning to say, consists of the collection, organization, summarization, and presentation of data by simply describing it. Yun yung sample natin. Yun yung data. Okay. So meaning to say, nag-describe ka lang siya gamit yung mga uh, charts natin, yung mga table, graphs, etc. And kapag sinabi naman natin inferential statistics, the word is simply inferring, di ba? Meaning to say, consists of generalis, generalizing from samples to population. Okay, perform estimations and hypothesis tests determining relationships among variables and making prediction. Ibig sabihin nito from sample, okay, generalize mo siya doon sa kabuuan niya. And you have to test and to be able to compare and determine what is the relationship. And therefore, you can now conclude or may prediction kang nangyayari dito. Okay, so ibig sabihin mas malalim yung, interpret uh, yung inferences natin. Okay, so with that, Pag sinabi natin descriptive, di ba, ito nagdi-describe lang, ito nag i ka. So, para madali natin or mas maintindihan natin yung differences nila. So, sa descriptive, we have the concern of describing the target population. So, naka, ang concern mo lang ito, ah, kailangan ma-describe mo lang siya, hanggang doon lang siya. Dito naman sa inferential, make inferences from the sample and generalize to the population. So, ibig sabihin niyan, hindi lang may describe no, kailangan you have to predict something, no? yun yung infer natin. And i-generalize natin. Kaya nga, mas mataas yung level nito, mas malalim. And dito naman, organize, analyze, and present data in a meaningful manner. So, diba, nag-collect ka, in-organize mo, in-analyze mo, and present. So, hanggang doon lang yung descriptive statistics. Pag sinabi naman ating inferential, so, merong nagaganap dito na kung pairs or compare. So, nag-test ka, nag-predicts future outcomes. So, yun yung ibig sabihin ng inferential. And we also have number three, final results are shown in the form of charts, tables, and graphs. So, dun mo lang siya sinamarize, no? Sa pumagitan ng mga iba't bang uri ng graph. Okay. Pero sa inferential, final result is the probability scores. Okay. Probability, no? This is the uh, occurrence or this is the chance. And we also have that describes the data which is already known. Kumbaga, nandyan na yung data. Dinescribe mo lang siya. Pero pag sa inferential, tries to make conclusion about the population that is beyond the data. Ibig sabihin niyan, nag-conclude ka doon sa data na nandyan na siya na nag exist Kaya mas malalim yung uh, pinatawag natin inferential. Meaning to say, go beyond what is being there. And also, so, meron tayong statistical tools, no, sa measure of central tendency. Yan yung mga mean, median, and mode. So, either pwede siyang group or ungrouped data. And also, that's dispersion. Yun yung spread of data natin. Gumagamit tayo dyan ng range, standard deviation, etc. Samantalang sa inferential naman, meron tayong statistical tools, no. We have the hypothesis test, analysis of variance, etc. Yun yung regression analysis, no. Okay, so we also have the, sa descriptive data set is small. Maliit lang yung data mo dito, kaya nga sa descriptive, dinidescribe mo lang yung data mo. Pag sa inferential naman, syempre, data is large. Kaya nga, you have to infer something, you have to predict something. Mas beyond what is being there. And with that, identify whether each statement is a descriptive or inferential statistics. So, number one, the average salary for a random sample of 60 high school teachers in 2014 was 54,820 pesos. So, kung a-analyze natin, no? So, the word average here, this is simply a descriptive. Kasi dinescribe mo lang yung salary ng mga teachers noong taong 2014. Hanggang doon lang siya. Kasi nandun na yung data natin. It's already be there. Di ba? And number two, in 2030, the province of X population is expected to be 1.3 million. Kung mapapansin natin, the word expected, this is simply nag infer ka na, di ba? You have to predict 
already. Ibig sabihin niyan, this is simply inferential. And number three, based on a survey, the mean weekly hours of TV watched by teenagers in the Philippines is 9.3 hours. So, dito makikita natin, no, based on survey, meaning to say, na-conclude muna siya, kaya nga meron tayong expected dito. Nag-infer ka, nag-expect ka. Kaya nga, this is simply inferential. And number four, in a 50 items month test, 41 students were able to receive a passing mark. The average scores of the class is 84 out of 100. From this, give the word average. Kumbaga nandiyan na yung score nila. Dinescribe mo lang din siya. Kaya nga, this is simply descriptive statistics. Okay, so aside from that, meron tayong tinatawag sa statistics na population and sample. Ano yung pagkakaiba kaya nito? Okay, pag sinabi natin population, kung observe natin itong figure na ito, no? yung population, ito nasa taas, yung sample nasa baba. Pag sinabi natin population, this is simply includes all members, elements, or persons of defined group that we are studying or collecting information from. Ibig sabihin yan, ito yung kabuuan or the, to the total members of being studied. Kaya nga siya, ito yung kabuuan numbers. And pag sinabi naman natin sample, this is simply a part of a population determined by sampling procedures. Mean to say subparts, mean to say this is kinuha lang siya doon sa population mo. Okay, kaya nga huwag, mag, huwag, huwag tayong magkamali sa definition. Pag sinabi population, ito yung total uh, members of being studied. Pag sample, this is part of the population being studied. And we don't identify whether each statement is a sample or population. So, number one, all registered voters. Diba? The word all, meaning this is simply population. Number two, 1,200 voters selected at random for a survey. Diba? It, ibig sabihin ito, the word selected at random. Ilan yung sinelect lang nila? 1,200. Ibig sabihin niyan, this is simply a sample. Kumuha lang tayo ng 1,200. Di ba? Ang dami-dami yung voters. Kaya nga siya, this is part of the total voters. Number three, cell phones manufactured today. Ibig sabihin, ilan yung nagawang cell phone? Kung baga, this is refers to the population. Yun yung total natin. Number four, sales received for 2020. Ibig sabihin niyan, this is also population. Yun yung mga resibo natin, no? yung lahat ng resibo noong 2020. Kaya nga, that is a population. Kaya this is large, diba? large data natin. And number five, a few laptops selected for test testing. This is simply, the word few refers to sample. Diba? Kumuha lang tayo na uh, ititest natin dun sa mga laptops. Okay, so with that, another concept, we have the word data. Pag sinabi naman natin data, this is a collection of facts such as the numbers, words, measurements, observations, or just description of things. And with that, there are two types of data. We have the qualitative data and quantitative data. Sa quantitative data, ito example natin, scores on exam, the weight of a person or subject, your shoe size, so qualitative naman, we have the colors, we have example, the green, white, blue, etc. Smell, uh, example, aromatic, battery. Okay, so name, uh, yung mga different names, uh, John, Patricia, Mary. So with that, we are going to differentiate, ano yung pagkakaiba ng qualitative sa quantitative? Pag sinabi natin quantitative, refers to information that can be measured and written down with numbers. Ibig sabihin nito, countable. Kaya nga, this is simply refers to numbers. Pag sinabi naman natin qualitative data, this is simply refers to the descriptive attributes or information that cannot be measured. Ibig sabihin nito, kinakategorize lang natin yan. Ibig sabihin nito, yung quantitative, answerable by numbers. Kaya nga siya numerical. Ito naman ay categorical. Kasi nakabase tayo sa kanila. Uh, attributes of the information. 
And with that, uh, identify whether each data is a quantitative or qualitative data. So number one, halimbawa tinanong ka, no, age, your age five years ago, di ba? So sa ganong tanong, kumuha na sila ng statistics, uh, statistical data natin, di ba? So with that, sasagutin mo yan ng number. Kaya nga, this is simply quantitative data. Next, we have the skin color. Pag tinanong, what is your skin color? Siyempre, either brown, white, etc. Kaya nga, this is qualitative based on the category, di ba? Number three, your average grade in elementary. Pag tinanong ka niya, no, kukuhanin ka na ng data mo. So, meaning to say, ang sagot pa dyan, simply a number yon. Kaya nga, this is quantitative. Number four, occupation of your parent. O, pag tinanong yan, ano yung trabaho ng parent mo? So, iba-iba yan, no? Example, doctor, nurse, teacher, etc. So, ang sagot doon ay, uh, that is qualitative. Diba? Kasi nga, categorical siya. Number five, religion. Diba? Anong religion mo? Pwede Catholic, Muslim, etc. And the answer is qualitative. It's based on the category. Okay. Next, we have number six, opinion on a political issue. Siyempre, ang sagot mo yan ay qualitative data, categorical. Iba-iba tayo ng opinion, no? I either agree ka or against do sa issue na yun. Number seven, number of COVID cases in the Philippines. Siyempre, it refers to number. Yung sagot natin dyan, number, no? Tinutukoy, ilan ba yung bilang? Kaya nga, ah, that is quantitative. Number eight, civil status. So, anong civil status mo? Ikaw ba married, single, separate? Meaning to say, this is categorical. Kaya nga, ang sagot ay qualitative data. Number nine, weight and height of your siblings. So, pag tinanong yan, no? Siyempre, ang tanong dyan, ang sagot mo ay numbers. Kaya nga, this is quantitative data. And last one, number ten, the length in hours of a basketball game. Siyempre, that is quantitative data. Countable siya or measurable. Okay, so with that... Meron tayong tinatawag na scales of measurement. Okay, by the way, pag sinabi natin measurement, this is obtaining or assigning a day numbers. Okay, so meaning to say, meron tayong apat na scales or level of measurement. We have the nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Ano yung pagkakaiba ng apat na level of measurement na to? Okay, so first, pag sinabi natin nominal measurement or nominal level, this is simply observation can be named without particular order or ranking imposed on data. So words, letters, and numbers are used to classify the data. Para mas madali natin maintindihan, the examples are race, color, classification, gender, civil status. Ibig sabihin nito, pinapangalanan lang natin sila. Wala tayong pakialam doon sa order or ranking niya. So, just simply giving a name. Kaya nga, based on the name lang tayo dyan, pag sinabing nominal. Okay, pag tinanong natin, anong gender mo? Siyempre, male or female. So, just simply give the name. So, wala ka ng pakialam doon, no? Kung wala ka ng pakialam sa ranking or uh, order. Okay. Next, number two. Ordinal measurement. Pag sinabi naman ting ordinal measurement. So, describes ranking or order naman dito. The difference or ratio between two rankings may not always be the same. So, example natin dyan, no? we have the academic ranking. Degree of illness. Balikan natin yung definition. No? Gini-describe natin dyan yung ranking or order natin. Diba sa academic ranking, may uh, rank 1, rank 2, rank 2. I mean, rank 1, 2, 3, 4. Ganon din sa beauty queen, no? Diba may uh, winner, meron tayong first runner at second, third. Ibig sabihin yan, meron tayong ranking nangyari. And meron tayong order. And, all, and with that, the difference or ratio between two rankings may not always be the same. Hindi ka, di ba, pag nag-compute tayo, hindi pare-paras yung kanilang ratio. Yun yung pagitan nilang dalawa. And the degree of illness, di ba? Kung ano na yung karamdaman natin. Siyempre, iba-iba yung ano natin dyan, yung degree, yung level. Nasa stage 1 ba yan, stage 2, stage 3, so on and so forth, no? Kaya nga, different 
uh, different ano yan, no? ranking may not always be the same. Yun yung ibig sabihin na ordinal measurement. So, ibig sabihin yan, kung babalikan natin, no, to dito, pwede na, pag sinabi ordinal natin, no, pwede mo siyang pangalanan at the same time, pwede mo siyang i-order. Okay, take note of that. Next, we also have the interval measurement. Pag sinabi naman natin interval measurement, it indicates an actual amount, yun yung numerical value or number natin. The order and the difference between the variables can be known. Its limitation, it has no true zero. Okay, ibig sabihin nga, no? So, meron tayong order at meron tayong uh, difference between the variables. Na malalaman na natin sila. Example natin yung temperature, negative 5 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees, 50 degrees, and 70 degrees. So, balikan natin. The order and the difference between the variables can be known. The order, di ba, in-arrange natin, no, from lowest to highest. And also, yung kanilang difference. Siyempre, from dito sa highest natin, no, 70. Kung kukumpare natin yan, yung 50 to 70, meron tayong uh, difference nila na 20 degrees Celsius. Dito naman, from 20 to 50, ang pagitan nila dito ay 30. Kaya ngayon yung difference natin, ma-identify natin yung kanilang difference between the variables and it has no, no true zero kasi nga meron tayong negative so ibig sabihin nito hindi natin uh, or it has no true so, has no true zero yun yung ibig sabihin no? and we also have the ratio level pag sinabi naman natin ratio level it has the same properties as the interval okay the order and the difference can be described. It has a true zero and ratio between two points has meaning. Kung dito sa interval, yung zero dyan, uh, hindi natin, uh, im hindi importante dito yung zero, no? Okay, dito naman may meaning or importante yung ano, may function or may gamit yung ray zero dito. Kaya nga, the order and the difference can be described has, it has a true zero and ratio between two points has meaning. So, example natin, yung mass, di ba? We have the highest natin dyan, yung 90 kilogram, second is 30 kilogram, 10 kilogram, and zero. Kung titignan natin yan, no, ibig sabihin yan, pwede natin siyang pangalanan, pwede na natin siyang i-rank, pwede natin siyang i-order. Okay. And also, pwede na natin silang Okay, and it has a true zero. Kung makapansin natin, no, yung from 30 to 90, yun yung pagitan ni ano yung ratio nila, di ba? So, meaning to say, yung 90, il, kung 30 uh, kilograms to, tatlong beses siya, no, doon sa highest. Kaya nga, this is three times. Yun yung 30 times 390 to. Dito naman, yung 10, ibig sa tatlong beses siya dito sa 30 kilograms. Kaya nga, uh, makikita natin yung difference nila. And dito naman, zero, ibig sabihin yan, sampung beso siya. Kaya nga, I mean, uh, nag-dump siya. Ibig sabihin niya, it has the same properties as the interval level. And yung zero natin dyan, yun yung tinatawag natin niya, na may meaning yung zero natin. Makikita kasi natin yung difference. And we don't determine which of the four levels of measurements, whether it is nominal, Ordinal interval and ratio is used. Example natin, average annual temperature in Tagaytay. Okay, di ba makikita natin yan? So, this is simply interval. Kung babalikan natin yung interval, no? Meron silang order and ranking. Okay, and we also have the, pag tinanong, what is your daughter's current height? Di ba? So, ang hinihingi dyan, number. Pero ang sagot dyan, this is simply ratio. So, meron tayong uh, differences niyan, di ba? And number three, a judge rates some pre presentation as good. Okay, that is simply ordinal. And number four, a political party to which its governor belongs. That is simply nominal, number five. Okay, so with that, para maklasify natin or para masummarize natin ang scale of measurement, so kapag sinabi natin nominal, Pwede natin siyang pangalanan. Pwede ba siyang ma-order? No. 
And in the difference, hindi rin pwede makita yung difference. Nila, no, kasi napapangalanan mo lang. Okay. And also, has no true zero. So, ordinal naman, pwede natin siya pangalanan, tsaka ma-order. But, hindi natin siya pwede eh, makita yung difference, tsaka yung no true zero. Sa interval naman, pwede natin siyang pangalanan, pwede siyang ma-order, at makikita natin yung kanilang difference. Pero, no true zero siya. Number, dito naman, sa ratio, pwede natin pangalanan, pwede siyang ma-order, pwede makita yung difference, at meron siyang true zero. Kaya makikita natin, no, yan yung summary natin ng level of measurement. Sige nga, isummarize na natin. Types of data, we have the qualitative and quantitative. Under of qualitative, meron tayo siyang nominal and ordinal. Dito naman sa quantitative, interval and ratio. Kaya nga yung qualitative data, no, quali, this is categorical data. Quantitative ay numerical data. And without determining which of the four levels of measurement, nominal, ordinary, interval, or ratio is used. Number one, weights of garbage discarded by household. This is ratio. Number two, name of the teachers in grade 7. Diba? Papangalanan lang natin, kaya nga nominal. Grades in mathematics, that is interval. Number four, ratings of excellent above average, average below, or poor of four painting exhibit, that is ordinal. Number five, height of a student, that is ratio. Number six, Military ranks, that is ordinal. Number seven, consumer must say whether they prefer brand A or brand B or no opinion at all. That is nominal. Papangalanan lang natin. Number eight, gender of nurses going abroad, either male or female. So meaning to say, papangalanan mo lang siya, di ba? That is nominal. N number nine, amount of money in the bank account. That is ratio. Next, number 10, the exact time in a day when you usually wake up, that is interval. Okay, kailangan nyo lang makabisado or uh, ma-identify yung kanilang uh, definition. Kasi doon mo malalaman kung ito ba ay nominal, ordinal, interval, or ratio. With that, I hope you learned something from this video and we'll see you next week. Goodbye, everyone.